Welcome to No One Cares About Your Band, a podcast where we talk to musical people about non-musical things. We are in day four of quarantine right now, so everybody starved for social interaction. This is great. <laughs> everybody wash your hands. We just finished our episode with um, Eric and Mike like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> We're just firing through them. Yeah, we're just going through it. Everybody everybody needs to uh, talk to somebody, so come on our podcast and talk to us. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about Wes Anderson movies with our special guest, Elise from Ferret Bueller. What's up? Hello. How are y'all? Pretty good. good. Pretty good. Just chilling. How have, how have you been doing in uh, the madness that is coronavirus? Uh, just surviving it. <laughs> I think that's how we're all right about now i think so i think that's kind of the goal right now yep Uh um so as we do uh we'll talk about some music to start out i realize i'm like now that i've already done like an episode today i'm going like flying through shit really quick so i'm gonna try and like (laughs) slow down i'm gonna try and take a breath and slow down first of all i didn't even introduce like us as host so i'm ben i host this (laughs) podcast ellie what's up Hi, I'm Ellie. I also host this podcast. It's okay. I'll fix it in post. <laughs> I think, who else do we got in the, I think we got Connor uh, just kind of chilling in the chat as well. And uh, Kate from Half Kidding chilling in the chat. So they may pipe up if need be, if they want to. I was hoping one of them would say something right there and they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. We'll fix oh, it in post. Down. All right. Yeah, we will fix it in post. That's going to be... That's going to be the motto for today is we'll fix it in post. So, Elise, what's up? Um, we'll talk about music to start for, like, 10 minutes, give or take, something like that. Um, I know there's a lot of, like, you know, cancellations and stuff like that going on, but what's going on with um, Ferret Bueller? Um, definitely, yeah. Some cancellations that we hadn't even announced, but we're very excited for it. Luckily, that stuff's postponed, so <laughs> we still have some cool shows for some point in the future. Um, I just did like a little solo tour with the Garbage Guys, really cool band from Michigan, Kalamazoo. Love Kalamazoo. It's one of my favorite places I, to tour through. I have not been still, but I went into Michigan, but I took like two steps into Michigan. That was it. I was basically <laughs> in Indiana, so. That's fair. It's a very blessed scene over there. Yeah, yeah, just, like, the sheer amount of, like, DIY venues that KZU has is, like, super awesome. And I wish I get out. I hope that in the future I get out there more often. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's sick. Um, wait, where in Michigan is Dog Leg based? Are they from Kalamazoo? Uh, the Detroit area. Okay. All right, I'll cut that out anyway, so who cares? <laughs> that was just me asking a random question. But. Anyway, so yeah, that's sick. Um, as far as, like, obviously touring plans are pretty much up in the air right now. But yeah. uh, what, about, what about, like, music stuff, like recording stuff? Anything in the pipelines right now? Um, You're- somewhat. Uh, technically, like, everyone who's in Ferret Bueller also makes up two other bands, um, Light Blue Lines and Youngheim. So the plan is, like, a release from each of us every month of the summer. So to be, like, Youngheim in June, and then Light Blue Lines in July, and then <laughs> Ferret in August. So we'll see how that goes, but that's the plan. <laughs> that's sick. Glad to, glad to hear people are still, like, doing stuff. It's a great time to record, at the very least. Definitely. So. I am, unfortunately, halfway across the country from everyone else, but hopefully I'll be back soon, and this quarantine will let up, and we can... <laughs> get some more recording going anything uh anything come out recently that you've been like vibing to as far as like new music and stuff like that that's not necessarily yourself yeah uh the new rap boys album uh printer's devil is really good i went to the release show and there were so many like other people in chicago bands there and it was just really great it's a it's such a good album that's good i haven't listened to it yet i really need to yeah, I, so I highly that. recommend. That'll be what I do after I get off this podcast, probably. <laughs> Rap Boys is such a good band. I saw them um, 
I saw them on the Near My God tour with Foxing, and it was like they were like one of the more uh, one of the sicker sets of the night for sure. Yeah, the first time I saw them was at South by a year ago, and that was cool. Also, Rip South by this year, but damn, big yeah. Rip South by. Sad. Yesterday. Yesterday. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big R.I.P. from Ellie and I. Uh, yesterday was supposed to be the uh, Chill Wave showcase, which oh, no. Ellie would have Ellie would have been helping out with, and I actually was in talks to fly out to Austin for to meet like the other two people that I run a label with. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is so tragic. So yeah, it's a little cursed, but we get through. It works out. But I think yeah. I've accidentally met someone from Chill Wave. In Texas? Like, at a show. Yeah, in Austin. It was, like, a mom, Dean's just friends. Oh, yeah. Um, awake but still in bed and retirement party. Probably Yeah, yeah and I had Robert. no clue it was someone from Chill Wave. Yeah, it was Robert. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for refreshing my memory. I just thought that was funny. It's such a small world. It's so funny because Chill Wave, like, as a person, is Alex, who lives in California, but nobody knows Chill Wave um, to, like, see him or anything like that. So, like, every now and then, if, like, me or Robert will say we're from Chill Wave, somebody will just, like, somebody will just, like, text their friends that, like, know Alex and be like, yo, I just met Chill Wave, and be like, who is it? And then just, like, send a picture of me or Robert, and it's like, oh, that's not Chill Wave. <laughs> yeah. That's off branch of Chill Wave. We kind of are. We're kind of just. We're kind of off brand. We're we're off brand chill for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. cool. Yeah, Robert. Robert was really like orchestrating that whole thing um, for like all of us really, and it's a real bummer that it didn't it didn't end up happening. But yeah, yeah the lineup was so sick. Yeah. What like Damn. venue in Austin were you? Uh, um, it was a house. Yeah, it was a house. Uh, I don't think it had an exact, like, name. Uh, yeah. It was, like, House of Los or something like that. Is that yeah. Right? Something I have like that. not heard of that one, but... It was, it's, it's a new house. a bummer. Oh, cool. Yeah, I again, I've been, like, out of the state for a little while, so... Either way, yeah. big R.I.P. to South by. Big rip. Mm. All right. So, I think, any other music stuff to add from anybody? Listen um, to Dog Leg? I was just going to say that. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, the new Dog Leg. Ellie, if we spend, Ellie, if we spend too much time uh, on the podcast together, we're just going to, like, finish each other's sentences. Yeah. <laughs> you will become one. Oh, God. Uh. I, don't have, I, don't have the, uh, I don't have the capacity for planning for that, I don't think. <laughs> I'm I'm already one with with Connor. I can't be one with another person. I would explode. I just got married, so like that spot is also taken for me. I think. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say congratulations. Thank you. Yes, congratulations, you. Ben. Appreciate that. Fortunately, uh, we live in a great time to play in a thirteen-person wedding. Yeah. We're we're very lucky that we intended it to be small from the start. Yeah, no, quarantine's a good excuse when people are like, why am I not invited? Oh, sorry, <laughs> coronavirus fears. Yeah, it's a great excuse right about now. Um, but anyway, I guess we can uh, start transitioning into our main topic uh, that Elise has chosen, which is Wes Anderson movies. So Yay. give us a little give us a little information about that. Like, um, I guess what is what distinguishes like a Wes Anderson movie? There are a lot of like certain characteristics that people say are like Wes Anderson esque, but I think the one thing is just they're all so quirky and like they are every hipster's dream. Like <laughs> anything a Portlandia character could expect from a film, it's like in these movies. Um, I think I this sounds like so corny but i started watching them to impress a friend of mine in high school who was like 
older and cooler and I wanted to be like her. Um, and then I actually ended up really liking these movies. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of like um, really stylized characters and sets, like really bright color schemes, a lot of um, like close ups of people writing things in fancy notebooks and like. It's just so stylized. Um, Mm -hmm. And I guess a consistent thing in a lot of them is Bill Murray and also (laughs) Owen and Luke Wilson. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's like a... If I had to just sum up all of his movies in a few things that sort of distinguish them, that would be that. Do you think that in, like, that in Wes Anderson movies, besides the actual like look of the film it's there's a um like a similarity in terms of storyline i'm not definitely i think i think all of them are just about dysfunctional families with like a main character who's a male who is deeply flawed but redeemable like that's literally if i if i condense the plot of half of these movies that would be it (laughs) just like bad family dynamics and a questionable male role. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's some reason we keep watching them, so. Yes, for sure. They've definitely got, like, an appeal to them. I think, like, a big definitely, thing about... Yeah. A big thing about Wes Anderson movies is also, like, the color palette, I feel like. They're they all always... so different, but so, like, beautiful to watch. hmm They always have, like... Have, like Hello. Like, you still hear me? Illusia? Yeah, we lost you for a second. Yeah, somebody somebody started calling me, so it like muted me. I think. Um, we'll fix but it anyway, in post. yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. Um, see, the fun part is this joke can't can only be a joke to the three of us because everything else is going to get deleted. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave uh, it. <laughs> But yeah, they all have like they all tend to like skew towards like a like a similar like pastel color palette and stuff like that too, which I feel like is where the like accidental Wes Anderson meme comes from. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of symmetry. Hello. Sorry, I think yeah, I, I wasn't sure what. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in yeah. post. It's fine. Fuck. That's, a, that's today. All right. Um, so how you kind of mentioned it already, but how did you get like introduced to Wes Anderson movies? Like what was your first Wes Anderson movie that you watched and like so on and so forth with that? So, yeah, um, my good friend in high school, Ava, um, who now studies film and I also study film. I feel so pretentious saying that. Um, but she was super into Wes Anderson movies Um, I like had never seen them but was one of those people who pretended I had and just didn't remember details Um, (laughs) until I was at my cousin's house and like he is in his early 30s he has like the entire collection on DVD all Criterion collection he has like prints in his house that are like of drawings of characters and I, I it's just really cool um so I watched Moonrise Kingdom which was the first Wes Anderson movie I saw and I'm like oh this is cool like these kids trying to live a life on their own without adults that's sick there's so much pink and a beach beautiful <laughs> and so then I just like went home and watched several others um, yeah. So, some some of the Wes Anderson movies, I'd say, are, like, there there's, like, some that are live action and some that are animated, correct? Yeah. And okay. with the animated, I think they're both, like, stop motion, which is really cool. So, like, Wes Anderson designed these puppets, um, or, like, I don't know. They're, like, claymation, but they have fur on them. It's so Mm -hmm. weird. But, like, 
I don't, it's, it has this charm to it that it's, like, stop motion. Yeah. But it looks like an animated film. Like, it's really well done. Is it all, like, true stop motion? Like, people are actually, like, moving the, like, models and stuff like that? I think, for the most part, with Fantastic Mr. Fox, it's stop motion. I don't know if Isle of Dogs is entirely stop motion or not, but... There's certainly elements of it that are, or large chunks. Mm -hmm. That's always something that's like interesting. I'm looking at the Wikipedia. (laughs) That's always something that's interesting to me is that like sometimes people like people will like cheat stop motion and stuff like that, like the cheating, like cheating like film effects and stuff like that. Like not a Wes Anderson movie, but like Birdman is like cheated to look like it's all one shot the whole time and stuff like that. Mm Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, no, that's really cool. It's like if you can get the same effect without putting in as much work, I mean, who's stopping you? Mm-hmm. It's definitely cool to see. Yeah. I feel like in terms of claymation in general, like I personally just like find myself wondering of claymation films that have been made in like the past, you know, 10, 15 years, like how much of an element that, uh, like digital editing plays in terms of making the film smooth isn't the right word, but like just generally like more connected and and rolling well. That's just yeah something that I think about. <laughs> yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, I I think of watching like Chicken Run and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it makes me so uncomfortable to watch it and I wonder how much of it is just because it's like an older claymation film like it's not even that old it's like early 2000s I believe but it's still just not as streamlined and it feels so weird mm-hmm. like even you watch like I guess like the best example that I can think of is like the um oh, I forget the studio's name right now but they made like Coraline and Paranorman and uh, Kubo and the two strings and like the difference between Coraline which is from like early 2000s I want to say and then like Kubo which came out like three years ago is like really astonishing even though they're both like true stop motion like yeah movies just because of like digital editing and stuff like that it's cool to see yeah I actually have like this weird like aversion to claymation that I've developed over the years Barring, like, the Christmas specials and, um, and, like, Fantastic Mr. Fox, actually. So, like, I don't know why, like, I have that particular over, but it's, like, it's really hard for me to, like, just sit down and watch a claymation movie. Like, I love the soundtrack to Nightmare Before Christmas, but I've never mm-hmm. seen Nightmare Before Christmas. So. Is, the, is it, like, the motion is just, like, jarring? Yeah, for some reason. I don't know. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but (laughs) I'm not sure why. But yeah, no, I think that it's, like, very interesting that certain styles of claymation, again, like, Fantastic Mr. Fox, are, like, so different, even though it's the same, like, basic concept. Yeah. Fantastic Mr. Fox is one of those that's very, like, grounded as well, I feel like. Like, oh yeah, for sure. There's n- there's not a whole lot of fantastical elements to that movie besides the fact that they're foxes and like animals yeah. and stuff. I mean, it's it just feels like another talking animal movie. Like I tend to forget that it's um like claymation. It does really just feel like an animated kids movie. Yeah. That's cool. So, um back to like questions and stuff like that. I guess the real like the major question is, like, what's your favorite Wes Anderson movie? Okay, I have two things to say that I have a favorite and one that I think is the best, and they are not the same for certain All right. reasons. Um, <laughs> my favorite is Rushmore. Um, I just, I watched it as, like, a sophomore in high school, and it's about, like, an underachieving high school sophomore and it's just really charming. I don't know. I I really like Jason Schwartzman. And it's kind of the first Wes Anderson film that feels like a Wes Anderson film. Bottle Rocket came before it. It came out like two years earlier. 
Um, but this was the first, like, really stylized characters that were kind of quirky. Um, and again, the, like, problematic male lead who redeems himself. <laughs> um, but when it comes to the movie that I think is the best, it's probably the Royal Tenenbaums. Uh, again, just, like, really stylized characters. Uh, problematic male character. Uh, dysfunctional family. And the cast is just so good. Um, it has, again, Bill Murray. Um, shit, I'm pulling up right now. Yeah, Owen Wilson and Luke Wilson not playing brothers. I love that. <laughs> uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, which who Ooh. knows how we feel about her now, but Ooh. she's she's great in this film. Um, ben Stiller, Angelica Houston, Danny Glover, like, it just goes on and on. Like, it's such a well-cast film. Mm-hmm. I do want to get to the cast at some point, but um, I kind of want to ask a question that kind of leads into my favorite Wes Anderson movie, which is Grand Budapest. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to ask a question as far as, like, film goes. Where do you feel, like, the strength of where do you feel like you get most attracted to a film because like with grand budapest for me i'm very into like the set design like cinematography aspects of it and that's what like really attracts me to that but like are you more into like writing are you more into like character work and that kind of stuff and like i'm just kind of curious like what aspect of it appeals to you that makes it your favorite yeah, I do think, like, well-developed characters that evolve enough over time, but not so much that it, like, gives you headaches. But I was about to say, with Grand Budapest, the reason I like it so much, too, because I, I would say it's probably my third or fourth most favorite Wes Anderson film, but it has a story where you're not entirely sure where things are going, but it's not, like, super twisty-turny. It's mm-hmm. still a very, like, smooth arc. And it, it doesn't, like, overwhelm the viewer. I guess all of these movies are not easy to watch, necessarily, but they're enjoyable. It doesn't make you think too terribly much. Um, but on rewatch, like, you'll notice some things you didn't prior. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Ellie, are you, like, are you familiar with uh, Wes Anderson movies as far yeah. as, like, things you've seen? I, I haven't like, you know, sat down and, like, been on a mission to watch all the Wes Anderson movies, but I have watched a couple. Um, again, like, Grand Budapest, uh, Moonrise Kingdom, um, oop, I just dropped my phone. Um, and, (laughs) uh, and Fantastic Mr. Fox are always the ones that, like, stuck out in my head. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure why those three in a couple, but, uh, I, it's, you know, a very unique thing to watch for anyone. Um, I think just in terms of like the stylization and I'd like venture to say that Wes Anderson probably has the most or one of the most at least like distinct kind of styles that, you know, he goes along with. Um, Mm -hmm. Like you can, like there are plenty of movies where you can watch and think like, oh, maybe this like director, this director was the person who was in charge of, you know, all of this, but it, when you watch a Wes Anderson movie, you, like, immediately know that it's a Wes Anderson movie, which is something that I find, like, pretty interesting. Um, and I think is definitely, you know, telling in terms of creative control, uh, how much creative control a director has in the process of making a film in general, which is something I was never really, like, aware of before of you know, the kind of seeing the kind of movies that Wes Anderson does. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm like moderately familiar to get back to <laughs> your original <laughs> question. What um, would you say is your favorite out of the ones you've seen? Um, probably Fantastic Mr. Fox. Mm-hmm. I also, you know, I'm very much of the opinion that like your favorites of anything, whether it be like, you know, painting or like album or like really or movie or really anything has a lot to do with like your emotional place at the time and the nostalgia and factors that surround that you know type of like 
that piece of art that you're around. So I think fantastic, Mr. Fox. I just have good memories of like just going to see in theaters like with my dad and just having like a good time when I was younger. I feel like that that movie and a lot of Wes Anderson movies actually kind of really hit on that like um like goalless kind of aspect of youth. I feel like Yeah. Like they're mm-hmm. very good at they're very good at hitting like the feeling that like you don't know the feeling of like uncertainty that um just goes along with like youth in general and like teenagers and stuff like that so i feel like yeah. whenever you see a wes anderson movie as a teenager i feel like you definitely like it sticks with even you even as like a young person like it's yeah it sticks with you you agree um do you agree with that elise yeah, I do. I think that probably adds to why like Rushmore is my favorite, even if I don't think it's the best. When you like see a film at a time where either you're just in a good place and you like it, or you're in a similar place to a character and can relate, like mm-hmm. it really impacts you a lot. Yes, for sure. So I guess question that I just really thought of. Um as we've been describing all of these Wes Anderson movies, like we've really hit the same beats with all of them. Like, you know, a lot of the stories are very similar. A lot of the actors like Wes Anderson pulls from the same stable of actors for basically every movie, like the aesthetics end up being very similar. So like what, what would you say distinguishes them like between each other? I think like it's such a nuance difference between each film but I do think the color palette adds so much to like the vibe that each one gives it may be the same basic story just like altered a bit uh to fit different situations and scenarios but I think the colors add a lot to it uh in terms of like which I associate more with certain colors like of course with how much yellow is in Fantastic Mr. Fox it's like, so much more vibrant and fun than a lot of the others. Like, they're all Mm -hmm. very enjoyable, but it feels like an adventure film, and it's still kind of the same basic, like, theme as the others. Yeah. So, yeah, I do think the, the, like, color palettes help a lot with distinguishing them. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you think it's, like, I guess this is, like, might not be the right term for it. Do you do you feel like Wes Anderson is more of like I don't necessarily consider Wes Anderson very like challenging as far as like watching a movie goes, like as far yeah. as like watching a film goes. I think it's kind of like just got like that like chicken soup vibe to it that like even though it hits the same story beats it kind of like like you don't go to it to find something like necessarily very new, but you find like yeah. something like very refined. In the same it's beats. it's definitely like my comfort food of movies, I'd say, and I feel like most people probably agree. My dad's kind of a fan, which I find funny. He's like seventy three and still enjoys these films. I but yeah, I I think it's not super challenging. Doesn't I've had films literally make me get stressed out and. <laughs> I've never really had that happen with a Wes Anderson film. Of course, there's a like very emotional scene in the Royal Tenenbaums, which like I just physically can't watch. But mm-hmm. otherwise, like yeah, it's more easy, just designed to be enjoyable. You know, like an hour and a half, two hour escape from whatever your reality is, but it's still kind of like that reality. Mm -hmm. It kind of like, it tugs on your emotions a little bit, but it's not trying to rip them out. Yeah, no, it's, it's heartwarming and not hot, heart wrenching. I'd say for the most part. Yeah. That's cool. So like, you've seen probably more of Wes Anderson movies than either Ellie or I. Is there a recommendation <laughs> you would say to start with? Um, I'd say to start with Grand Budapest or Moonrise Kingdom. Most people, when they say their favorite, it's one of those two. And I feel mm-hmm. like there's a good reason. Like, it's both are the most indicative of, like, Wes's style. 
And Grand Budapest, I think, was probably the best film that came out in 2014. Yeah, 2014. That was a stacked um, year, too. Yeah, it was a good year for movies. Mm-hmm. But I think um, both of those pull all of the elements um, that, like, we talked about. Uh, the redeemable characters, very stylized characters and sets. They're just so beautiful. Like, even if you watch them with no sound, like, they're so beautiful. And the soundtracks to both are really great. Oh, yeah, music is definitely a big thing in all of those movies, for sure. Mm-hmm. It's a little it's a little secondary, but it, like, it's secondary in a way that it, like, plays to the aesthetic, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it all, it all fits so well with the story beats, um, I think, contributes a lot. Sometimes music in a film just feels like a placeholder, just something to keep it from being completely silent. But I feel like, for the most part, the music in Wes Anderson's films are very intentional. Mm-hmm. So we talked a little bit about the actors and stuff like that. Like, obviously... Bill Murray and like Owen and Luke Wilson um, are like huge members of the cast um, of Wes Anderson movies, like 90% of the time. And like, you know, there's a lot of like common actors um, that he comes through with. Do you feel like, cause like a lot of them are like comedy actors. I feel like, you know, Yeah. do you feel like he pulls like a different performance out of, like those people and that's why he just like continuously works with them like do you think that do you think that like bill murray playing like steve so is going to be different than would be different if there was like another act or another director like behind the scenes with it you know yeah i i do think so i think wes like built this level of trust with the actors he has in his films i know like both he and the Wilson brothers all grew up in Houston, Texas together and like went to neighboring high schools. And oh, wow. the more you know someone, I think the easier it is to pull what behavior and what sort of acting you want out of them. I also just kind of like how this is like Bill Murray's second wind, like <laughs> long after the days of Ghostbusters and Groundhog Day, like we have an older Bill Murray and there's a reason that he chose to be in these films too like he could have just not and Wes could have found another guy but I think the fact that Bill Murray too was excited to be a part of this um adds to like getting the performance and type Mm -hmm. of character you want out and it's kind of fun because again like the continuous stream of easily recognizable characters like adrian brody too is in several of these films but they're all like playing one of the different archetypes each time you never really see the same person as a protagonist or as like some sort of guiding intelligent wise figure it's he kind of takes this pool of people and just shuffles them each time and when there is like fresh fresh acting like a new um actor it's they blend really well because you have Mm -hmm. an existing like ensemble cast that they can kind of work off of yeah i guess that makes sense it's very um it's very familial in a way like they you know it's wes anderson's making a movie who do you have to call like you know you have a list yeah Yeah. and that's cool At the same time, I am one of those people who's always like, oh, we need to see new people in Hollywood. Hollywood's like a cesspool. Um, (laughs) But my exception for saying that is Wes Anderson films. For sure. If there was, so this is just a fun question. Is there an actor that, you know, isn't part of the general stable of Wes Anderson movies that you feel like he could get a really great performance out of? Hmm. Take your time. I can cut out the pause. That's a really good question. Um, I'm going to think for a second on that. Um, 
this sounds strange, and I don't know why he was the first person who came to mind, but I feel like it'd be cool to see Jason Bateman from, like, Arrested okay. Development and Ozark. Like, I, I, I mean, he plays, like, a somewhat quirky, sarcastic dad, uh, and I feel like somehow that could blend into this. I was gonna say Michael Sarah, and I feel like that's a cop out, and that was the next <laughs> thing that came to mind. Because <laughs> I mean, we already have like Juno, which is again sort of in that style, and mm-hmm. I even want to say that like Scott Pilgrim sort of like falls into that vein of like super stylized. Yeah, like yeah. films, and also has Jason Jason Schwartzman, so it's like one step away from being a Wes Anderson film, anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I it think it'd be. be cool to see Jason Bateman as like a man having like a midlife crisis, and then see how Wes Anderson would take that. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I'm thinking about Arrested Development now, but I feel like Will Arnett might also be like a very good like True. person to bring into that fold. Honestly, any of the He's core actors on Arrested actor. Development. Yeah, no, I, I could see literally any of them. <laughs> like even like Jessica Walder or like um oh what's the dad? Jeffrey Tambor would like I feel like they could all easily fit into that, like into those roles in some kind mm-hmm. of way. That's cool. Yeah. But yeah, and um I feel like that was something that a lot of people talked about when Zootopia came out. Because Jason Bateman played the fox in Zootopia, so then they naturally compared it to the other animated I didn't fox. even think about that. That's probably why, like subconsciously. <laughs> All right. Bit of a technical difficulty, but we're back. All right. So we were talking to Elise about Wes Anderson movies and specifically like characters that or actors that we would like to see in Wes Anderson movies. We were talking about Jason Bateman. Um, and just generally, like, how, how like, the Zootopia Fox was very similar to George Clooney and such <laughs> like that. Um, is there anybody... Is there anybody else that you, would, that you would like to see as far as, like, an actor in a Wes Anderson movie? We talked about, like, the I... Arrested Development cast, basically, but... Yeah, I just thought of Tom Hanks. I feel like he and Bill Murray are both that kind of, like, classic actor who's been around, started with more comedic or, like, wholesome, iconic films that would be cool to see in a more... I mean, at this point, Wes Anderson's not really indie, but it's definitely an independent film style. So I think it would be cool to see him. That That would be interesting. I'm definitely I'm on I'm definitely on the same boat with like Jason Bateman and Will Arnett and like that. Um, I think Tom anyone Hanks would be really a good really voice cool. Actor. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Honestly. I feel like Amy Sedaris would probably do a pretty do a pretty great job in um, yes a Wes Anderson movie for sure. Yeah, like um, I feel live action or not, voices just add a lot to characters for me. They really do, and I feel like that is. That might be like a lot of where that comes from too. Like a lot of where like the characterization comes from is just like that specific tone of voice. Like that might be part of the directorial style. Maybe I could be yeah. completely bullshitting, but who knows? I mean, I get that considering you have Owen Wilson in <laughs> essentially all of these, and he has like the most distinguishable voice i i can see how that adds to characterization a lot see where's mike from summer brews to come in with like a wow sound effect <laughs> yeah no i i cannot do the owen wilson impression <laughs> try as i might and i had no clue he was lightning mcqueen for a really long time <laughs> like a really long time oh god That's yeah funny. he's done like so many different roles like, it's kind of ridiculous at this point, honestly. Although I will say yeah. that my favorite Owen Wilson movie is probably Wedding Crashers. That's because a good one. I have not seen it. <gasps> <laughs> it's I'm so dumb and so good. Film student versus tried... Ellie Hart. Yeah, no, I... Uh, Zach tried to get me to watch... Um, 
hot rod and I hated it so much. I like Oh. There's something about the stupidly funny films. Like there are parts of it where I'm like, "Oh, haha, that's actually kind of funny." But like on the whole, I just like can't get into it. I need I don't even know what I need out of a movie. I don't know until after I've seen it. So <laughs> Mhm. I feel that. I get that. I definitely get that. All right, so Also, flip... adding Night at the Museum. Good yeah. good Owen oh, Wilson yeah. moments. Wait, Ben Stiller would be a great Wes Anderson character. He's oh, in yeah. um yeah, he's one of the kids in the Royal Tenenbaums. I think that's oh. that's like the only thing he's been in though. Yeah, he's not he's not in like the stable. Yeah. That he pulls from in general. But it may I mean it makes sense that he would pop up eventually. Yeah. Um yeah, cool. So I guess to flip the question on its head um you know the general stable of actors what other director would you like to see with those actors to make a more you know to make not a slapstick comedy movie <laughs> yeah um let's do spike <laughs> jones and just make it Ooh. like the most like blockbuster film possible it just can't be as or, british you gotta yeah. get jason statham in there somewhere <laughs> yeah Alternatively, like, if you want to keep the same sort of element, but make it feel more human, if you took, like, Greta Gerwig, I mean, Lady Bird looks Ooh. like it could be shot in anyone's house or neighborhood, like, yeah. Yeah. Sacramento is so not pretty, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, if you wanted to take any Wes Anderson film and make it look just like everyday life, I think Greta Gerwig would do that. I think Greta Gerwig definitely Greta Gerwig is almost like like a second evolution of Wes Anderson type filmmaking yeah. I feel like because she's got it's like, like Wes adjacent for sure yeah she definitely has like a somewhat similar but definitely distinct visual style and like you know like Swarcy Ronan and like um like the actors and actresses that she uses are definitely like you know she tends to pull from the same talent pool as well mm-hmm. yeah so that's interesting i guess that's a the good same sort of consistency yeah so i guess that's a good but also I... sorry I keep... <laughs> no go ahead go ahead go ahead you're the guest um yeah her her partner noah bombach he directed what is it called the Squid and the Whale. Um, it's like an art house film. I have not seen it, but like Wes also contributed to that. I think he produced it. So like okay. that's more of a circle of people with these similar styles who are like connected, whether we know it or not. Like they have worked together. Yeah, for sure. It's really cool. Yeah. I guess that'll go into like what would be my next question, and we kind of just answered it, but like. What is a director, or, like, not even a director, but what is, like, some movies, or, like, if there's a director with a style um, that you would recommend based on, like, somebody liking Wes Anderson, or go to Wes Anderson if you like these movies? Um, I'd say (laughs) similar movies. Like, Lost in Translation, I think the fact it has Bill Murray kind of adds to that, but Mm -hmm. I I think it has the feel of Wes Anderson for sure and then also Amelie and I have no clue how to pronounce the director's name because it's French but it's like Jean-Pierre something um Mm -hmm. but it's like sort of rom-com but definitely has that same appeal to like hipsters and (laughs) the rest of us alike (laughs) yeah the cinematography in Amelie is definitely um very similar I think a lot of French movies they get into that like quirky kind of aspect that Amelie gets into do the same do like similar yeah. things I think Wes tries really hard to like emulate a lot of French aspects mm-hmm. so like I, I see the connection and I would there's another film I would say and that would be Midnight in Paris but it's directed by Woody Allen and I'm not out here Ooh. trying to promote saw that before all this shit um very disappointed because i like yeah. that movie a lot but you know we can't we can't support 
Yeah. I won't. <laughs> uh, why do why do men in positions of power have to go and ruin the things we love? <laughs> have you seen um Have you seen the Before trilogy by uh, Richard Linklater? So I have it's, not. Um, before midnight, before dawn, and oh yeah, it has the one guy who was in um Dead Poets Society, right? Yeah, Ethan um, Hawke. Yeah, oh Ethan my gosh. Hawk. Mm-hmm. I think I've seen one of them. I don't remember which. Those have a very similar... I feel like those are very, like, similar in, like, the French cinematography and, like, French um, influence vibes to me. Yeah. So definitely recommend. definitely recommend those. I haven't seen uh, what is the newest one, which I think is before more... I don't remember what the last one was called, actually. But, um... Yeah, the Before Trilogy is absolutely, like, very, very well-made films. Anything by Richard Linklater, really, is, like, pretty well-made and, like, well-done. Yeah. Um, cool. So what are other what are other movies, directors, uh, anything like that that you would recommend, you know, just dis- not even distancing yourself from, like, the Wes Anderson thing? Just because I'm curious. Well, this is kind of a funny comparison to make, I would say, but I feel that there's a lot of similarity between, like, shit, I'm so tired. Um, (laughs) We can fix this in post. Why can't I remember his name? Um, John Hughes. Yeah, so, like, again, the John Hughes, like, sort of similar people, similar circle of actors. Um similar like storylines they're all about like teenagers and Mm -hmm. being rebellious or different um but i feel like yeah again you have these very stylized characters a sort of fun plot to watch unfold like it's nothing jarring but it's still enjoyable but i just think of the characters in the breakfast club and i'm like if you just made slightly more vibrant, like, environments, it would be a Wes Anderson film. That's cool. That's interesting. Because he, like, Wes Anderson probably took took some influence from John Hughes. Like, who doesn't, first of all? But, yeah. like, his style of, like, writing youth characters in general, I feel like, has that, like, us-against-the-world kind of vibe to it. Yeah, you know? I think that's that's one of the things that, in comparison to some, like, directors, Wes Nails is, like, getting the younger characters right. I mm-hmm. think Fantastic Mr. Fox, you have, like, your standard, like, teenager in a fox form, and then also, <laughs> like, an overachieving one. And it shows sort of the dynamics of, like, jealousy and insecurity as a younger person, but also those characters aren't, like reduce to i guess teen stereotypes again it's a fox so like who knows what the stereotypes of teenage foxes are but i think it's a a very cool way yeah (laughs) but yeah i agree hello oh here i am okay I have the worst Wi-Fi. It's fine. It happens. But mm-hmm. that's actually that's actually a good time to um well Ellie, you have anything to add? Um I don't know. We pretty much like went through and covered all my questions. Um which usually happens. But <laughs> Yeah. I feel like I I may or may not have like intentionally worked myself into a corner in terms of what I have to talk about but also that's fine for me keeping it concise yeah we got a lot of we got a lot of good information about it anyway like we filled out the whole episode pretty easily i would say and yeah i think it's better to be more specific in general just because it makes people talk about the details of things yeah for sure definitely like if you were just going to come on to talk about like movies in general or like what you like they would have just been like how do you feel about this movie what do you do you like this movie oh what movie gosh, do you like yeah. you know but like, yeah there's so so far to take things so much yeah. possibility 
So I like getting into like the little minute details and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting. But uh, I believe we have just about filled out our episode time. Awesome. So, yeah, this is this was fun. This was a very this is a very good come down from the like ten person <laughs> the, episode that yeah, we just yeah, recorded. The wrestling. I, I learned a lot about wrestling. Um, I'm try- there was, like, one wrestler who, I don't know why, but I think he looks like Gerard Way, and I'm pretty sure he's straight edge, but I don't remember his name. But, like, that made me start thinking about him. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good come down from that. This is a nice, like, easy episode. This will be This will be a very yeah. easy episode to listen to, whereas, like, the wrestling episode is probably going to be a little um, chaotic. So many voices. <laughs> <laughs> so many voices. Um, but yeah, this has been very fun. This has been very cool. Yeah. And for so, sure. yeah, and we can like transfer into like the plugs and stuff right now, and you know, start finishing up. If you have anything else to add about like Wes Anderson movies in general. Maybe, um, I don't know, give a recommendation or something like that. Like, tell somebody to watch something. I can give my, like, I can give my, like, ranking of them and reasons. Just, like, in so many words, I guess. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, I'd say the number one Wes Anderson movies, The Royal Tenenbaums, uh, has the best cast of all of them i would say and just like the way they work as an ensemble is great uh rushmore is my second favorite because it's the first like sign of the wes anderson style like his emergence as a very stylized director Mm -hmm. number three is fantastic mr fox because like nothing can top that i mean he he took a story that wasn't his own and just adapted it into something that felt so like characteristically West that like you, you wouldn't believe that it's not his own story. Mm -hmm. And then number four, Grand Budapest. There's a reason why everyone says it's their favorite. It's because it's just a really good film. Lots of purple. I'm here for purple. Purple's great. Probably Aren't the best all... story of all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the more unique uh, ones. Definitely. Yeah. Um, then I'd say at number five, The Life Aquatic. Very Bill Murray heavy, which I'm here for. And I think <laughs> of all of them, probably probably has the best music. Like it's a lot of really cool acoustic guitar singer, songwriter type music, which it it adds a lot, I think, for this film. That has Number... the cool miniature shots too. Yes. Ah. Oh, we I didn't love even them. talk about those. There's so much more. Like even in this <laughs> this little category, there's so much to get detailed about. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah. Okay. So after the life aquatic. Sorry. Uh, I guess. Oh, you're good. I think this is number six. I'd say Moonrise Kingdom. I, I, the best like characterization of young people. I, it, I mean, it probably has the most young actors out of any of them. And it's mm-hmm. funny because the the like protagonist female in in this film is also in a movie about this girl who like falls in love with all time low. <laughs> like, I don't, let me pull up this movie because it's so oh, oh my god it's it's the best worst thing ever but everyone's like oh she's gonna be like this indie actress and then she's in a movie about an all-time low like, like super fan um what's it called fangirl it's called fangirl yeah. like almost famous but, <laughs> Go for, watch but for it. pop punk yeah yeah no it's almost famous but for a girl who's really into all-time low and man overboard <laughs> Damn. Um. Oh my God. Is it? Is it Loki? Just Hannah? Who yeah. Knows? For real. Uh, <laughs> uh. Then number seven, I would say, is Bottle Rocket. I think it's just it's fun. Whether you like it or hate it, a lot of people are like, "Oh, it's the worst West Anderson film," which I definitely disagree with. It's just not exactly like the rest. It 
doesn't really have the same style, but we can see the emergence of mm-hmm. like his writing style and like characterization, even if it's not as like visually appealing. And it's then a little weird in the there. marathon. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's the way you start the marathon if you go chronologically, so it's all uphill from there. Um, then number eight, I'd say, is where I put the Darjeeling Limited, which I have, like, a massive poster of it on the wall in my room. So the fact it's this low on the list is kind of strange. <laughs> but... <laughs> it's telling about it's the I'm, quality. Yeah, it does. You can like something, and just because you like something doesn't mean it's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, that's how pop punk works that's truly <laughs> yeah no i i loved four years strong and like why <laughs> um, yeah i was just gonna make then, a comment about the front bottoms which are my favorite band but they're not a good band <laughs> there you the go front bottoms are like one of the worst bands and i agree they are one of my favorites <laughs> There's some theory that like our music taste is formed by whatever we liked when we were 13. So like everything we liked from that point forward in in some way reminds us of what we liked when we were 13. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then finally at the bottom of my list I have Isle of Dogs which I feel like a lot of people would probably throw hands at but <laughs> I think it's good. I mean the fact that I like this director enough to have watched all these films, like, multiple times in some cases, or the fact that I chose to talk about that today probably says yeah. a lot about how good these films are, regardless of where they fall in a ranking. Absolutely. Also, these are, like, low-key hot takes anyway. No one else agrees with this. Every list I've looked at on the internet looks nothing like mine. So... <laughs> Bear it in mind, it's all just my opinion. (laughs) We just put that disclaimer out there at the very end, obviously. Yes. (laughs) All of this was opinion. Yeah, my definitely well-researched in Wes Anderson films and spitting only facts. (laughs) (laughs) All right, excellent. So I guess we can start transitioning uh, out now. We can start some social media plugs. Definitely sure very fun thing. to talk. Um, this has been super sick. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. <laughs> I have not talked to a lot of people in the past, like, four or five days, so. That's why we got a podcast. Yes. Why Ellie's been That's why Ellie's been going hard on scheduling. <laughs> Truly. Rise up. Yeah. So yeah. Go ahead and um, plug the socials, plug the bands, plug the personals, plug the, I would say plug the shows, but. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if only we could plug shows soon enough. There's one planned yeah. for June that, like, if it does not happen, I'm gonna sob. Um, our band at is at Ferret Bueller IL on like everything. Um, my Twitter is Gita Weed. My last name's Gitaman. Um, so it's like G I E D E and then Weed. Uh, I don't smoke. I, I don't know <laughs> why. That's my username. Um, Instagram's just Gwen Giedemann. Uh Yeah. Um, upcoming stuff with Youngheim and Light Blue Lines. I don't actually remember the ads for either of those, but they're not that hard to find on Twitter. <laughs> we'll put them in the description. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we got it. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's the one I'm leaving in. Right there is the one that I'm leaving in. So just know that yes. we have fucked up like eight times in this episode, and I've had to <laughs> fix all of it. <laughs> um, I mean, I so. feel like that's that's a good like carrying theme to have in an episode about movies. True, especially <laughs> edited, especially movies as heavily edited as Wes Anderson. Yes, <laughs> yes. So it's perfect. <laughs> It's perfect. I'll post this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna change the color of the broken guitar on uh, our on our thumbnail to be that. like <laughs> to be like a pastel pink. Yes. <laughs> I'll put the courtesan du chocolat on in the corner or something. <laughs> I'll do something. Yes. I'll do something with it. I'll flex my uh, Photoshop game. We love it. <laughs> so Ellie, what's uh, what's the socials um, for the second time socials. today? Socials for me are 
I do a bunch of other stuff, but you can find them all at in my bio um, on Twitter, which is uh, Ellie underscore heart underscore the T-H-O. Feel free to go on there, give me a follow, DM me if you need anything. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I got right now. I would prolong the tours that I have coming up, but who knows if they exist anymore. So. <laughs> R.I.P. tours. Um, R.I.P. tours, yeah, truly. R.I.P. my job existing. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Jobs, plural. <laughs> Jobs. Uh, so yeah, my um, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Or wait, not my Instagram. I don't know, whatever. Find me on Twitter. <laughs> it's at Alpaca Neb. Alpaca like the animal, N-E-B. And if you want to follow the podcast, it's at no number one cares cast. So no one cares cast. Um, and if you want to, you know, give us a rate, give us a review subscribe do all that fun stuff that people say at the end of youtube videos please do that (laughs) that helps us out you know makes me feel like we're not doing this all in vain hopefully the quarantine gets people listening (laughs) um subscribe to chill wave on youtube because that's where we drop this and also i have a big hand in running it so it'd be sick if you subscribe and that's about it we can wrap up on episode seven thank you elise for being here this has been super fun